I am Miss Pritchard. I'm a fourth grade teacher here at Shady Grove Elementary. This is our innovative learning coach, Mrs. Ballou, and today we're going to be doing a Cinderella STEM activity that goes along with some of our literacy and science standards. So, what are we learning today, guys? We are going to be doing um, a lesson that goes along with the Cinder Edna book that we read last week and the coding lesson that we did with Mrs. Ballou in the lab on Friday. So, I want you guys to think all the way back to the fourth, or the fourth quarter, the first quarter, when we were learning about weather. And I want you to think about some of the extreme weather scenarios that we learned about. Who can raise a hand and tell me one example of a, an extreme weather occurrence? Sam. Uh, like tornadoes. Tornadoes. Logan. Hurricanes. Hurricanes. And one more, Gabby. Earthquakes. Earthquakes. Ooh, I just need one more, actually. Madison. Tsunamis. Oh, you guys aren't getting the one I want. What would happen in the winter time? Nathan. A blizzard. A blizzard. Okay, so today our lesson's going to have something to do with blizzards. We'll get there in a second. And we are going to be thinking about summarizing the plot of Cinder Edna that we read last week. So what's the plot of a story? What does that mean? Mia. The events that happen in the story. The events that happen in the story. And what are some of the things that we would want to include if, the, if we were going to summarize the plot of a story, Amina. Beginning, middle, the beginning, the middle, and the end. And we also want to make sure we're talking about character names and specific vocabulary from the story, right? Okay, so who can raise a hand and read to me why the first reason why we are learning this? Charlotte. I can um, Why? The why? I to prepare for extreme weather events. So what are some of the things we might need if there was a blizzard or a hurricane in order to be prepared for that scenario? All right, and who can read the second reason why we are learning this? James, nice and loud, buddy. I am learning this to help me understand what I am reading. Right, to help me understand what I'm reading, because what is the point of reading if you don't understand what you're reading about? All right. Who can give me two ways that at the end we're going to know if we've learned this? Oh, well, give me one first. Raise a quiet hand. Nathan, nice and loud. I can identify items needed to prepare for extreme weather events, such as a blizzard. Yes, items needed to prepare for extreme weather events, such as a blizzard. And who can read the second one? Nice and loud, Ben. Yes. Character names, important vocabulary from the story, and details. All right. So I want you guys to think back to when we read Cinder Edna last week. Can you recall and retell the events of Cinder Edna? Give me a thumbs up if you can. All right. What we're going to do is, before we get started, we're going to turn and talk to our tables about the events in the story just to kind of give us a refresher. All right. All right. Turn and talk. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So far, Okay. You said those. Who are our two characters? All right. What happened at the beginning? Cinder Ella did not like doing everything that her stepsisters did, and Cinder Edna did like doing. So Cinder Cinder Edna did like doing the chores, and Cinderella didn't. So we're comparing and contrasting those two characters, right? Um, what happened in the middle of the story? They went to the dance Okay. And what happened at the end of the story? The prince. Okay. And what what was the ending for Cinderella? Um, she married. She married the prince. But is that what Cinder Edna wanted? No. She was different. What did she want? She wanted to marry the. The, the, prince's little little brother, the prince's little brother, and did she still like to do all the stuff around the house yes. and be creative and 
It was a little bit different, right? I was talking to this table, and they did a great job retelling the whole story. So let's see if maybe uh, Brady can tell us what was happening at the beginning of Cinder Edna. So Cinder Edna, he liked doing the chores. So Cinder Edna liked doing chores. Did Cinderella like doing chores? No. She wanted to do what her stepsisters were doing, right? Mm -hmm. OK. What happened in the middle, Amina? Um, they went to a ball at midnight, but then the, at midnight the spell went away. Who is they? Can you tell me who they are? Um, Cinder Edna and her sisters. Her sisters, OK. And their shoe came off. So then the prince came to their house. And what happened, Nora? He tried to find Cinder Edna and Cinderella, mm -hmm. and then he, his little brother, Prince's little brother, married Cinder Edna. Yep, and did, so Cinderella got to be the princess, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what Cinder Edna wanted, though, guys? No. No, she was different. What did she want, Mia? She wants, she wanted to have a normal life, but not really like a fancy one. Yeah, she was happy still doing her same chores, having her normal life. Right? Okay, so think about how you use those elements from the plot and connect back to when we did the coding activity. Think about how you use the plot to make your little map of the story and code the code and go bots, all right? Um, are the traditional story of Cinderella and Cinderella super similar? No. no. Did they have some of the same characters and some of the same elements, like the ball and Cinderella doing the chores and all that? Yeah. The, the stepsisters? But they weren't quite the same, right? We learned that Cinderella was happy being more of just a normal person. She didn't need to be a princess. She was fine being at home doing her own thing, right? All right. So today we're going to be doing a STEM activity, and Mrs. Ballou is going to explain to you what we're going to be doing. Okay, friends, so we're going to start just by telling you what this project is, and then we'll break it down, okay? So your challenge today is Cinderella is on her way to the ball, but a blizzard is predicted to make it landfall. Can you build two tires to help her carriage travel through the snow without getting stuck? Okay, giving you some time to process that. What is going to be our end goal for this challenge? Raise your hand. This could be our end goal, Sam. To like, uh, um, to like help uh, Cinderella to make her way to the ball before uh, the, the the blizzard makes a landfall. Okay, so it's predicted to make landfall, and we're trying to build what to help her get to the ball. Yes, Sam. Two tires. Two tires. You're exactly right. I'm going to tell you what materials you're going to have today in order to be able to build. You're going to have pipe cleaners, glue, straws, pom-poms, masking tape, popsicle sticks, aluminum foil, yarn, toothpicks, and some of your tools like scissors. You will also have paper, skewers, snow to be able to test it, and Dixie cups and cotton swabs. So it's a lot of different stuff. What's going to happen is most of your stuff will be in a Ziploc today, okay? You and your partner will get a Ziploc of materials to be able to build with. And then if you need something extra, we have extra things like tape to be able to pull from, okay? Now, before we get to the actual building part in a STEM challenge, what do we need to do first? What do you think? Before you actually build, what do we need to do? Code. Not code. We need to plan it out. What's a plan? What is it? Okay, you said before you do something, you have to think about what you need to do. Now, when we plan, we need two important things on our plan. Any ideas what those important things are? Yes, give her an air high five. That's exactly right. We need to draw our picture, and we need to be able to label it. What are those labels going to be? What do you think? What are those labels? Your materials. So we've got a materials list up here that we talked about. So when you're drawing your picture, you've got to think about what materials you have access to to be able to build. Now, do you need to use all the materials? No. No. 
You need to use what you and your partner think is best for your building, okay? For your design. So in front of you today, you have a paper. At the top it says draw and label your plan, and you are going to draw that picture today and label it, which is those materials. Thumbs up if that makes sense. Awesome. So with our plan, we're working together to make a plan that includes both materials and the picture, and you're going to be checking in with an adult before you move on to the building. Thumbs up if that makes sense. We'll be asking you about what you're thinking about, what is needed in your design. Now, is your plan going to be the same as another group? No. no, that's the best part about a STEM project, guys, is we don't expect your projects to look the exact same. We want them to be different. So we want you to be thinking about what makes sense for you and your partner as you are building, okay? When you are working today, Ms. Richard is going to talk about how we're going to be breaking up into our group. Okay, so I already went ahead and gave you a partner to work with. When you are told to go, you and your partner are going to find each other and find a quiet spot in the room away from some other people. You are going to take your clipboard that already has your paper on it and your pencil. The two of you are going to plan together. All right? All right, so you're going to draw and you're making a list of materials, okay? So what are you guys thinking? Brainstorm, thinking about what materials you have, what would make a good tire, how you're going to attach them, right? So you're drawing. Can you show me your tires? So it's swabs, and then we tape them together, and then we put string here to keep our weight together. Interesting. And you're, make sure your two tires are attached, too. Yeah. So you're going to need something to attach them together. So think about that, what you could use. We could make, like, um, like, 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 and then we could, um, use the straws. So on the square part, like, it should be, like, a curve, though, kind of. Part. Yeah. So I'm thinking of doing, like, a little, my, I'm thinking of, like, doing, like, a, like a little like box so that seems really like safe. And, like it's like three three layers. So, like if you like that's like three layers. Like, oh yeah, because then you can keep warm on the inside. Yeah. What are you guys gonna use for the tires? Not everybody all at once. Um, Look at your materials. What's something that could like roll like tires would? I'm going to put a door right here. Yeah, yeah. So, so it kind of looks like a carriage. Then with the tires, maybe we could use like this and then pull it up like a top. Yeah. Play painters. Or uh, popsicle sticks. We have them. Yeah, you can put them like around the tire. Yeah. All right, we are, if you have finished making your plan, that's totally fine. You can go ahead and build after I ask you two questions. What's going well so far? And what could go better? So think about that for a second. What's something that's going well so far in your planning process? Um, ben, thank um, you. Finding the materials. Finding the materials. Thinking of ways to use them, right? What else is going well, Gabby? Drawing a model and making a plan. Awesome. And one more, Sam. Like the brainstorming. The brainstorming. Okay. What is something that you feel like could go better? I mean, now that was your five minute time. Is your plan ready to go? Or do you think maybe there's something that you could have done a little bit better? James. I mean, I think I, I, think, I, I, think, um, I didn't have enough time Okay, you could have maybe used your time a little bit better. Yeah. All right, well, now you guys can, if you're still planning, I would only take like a minute or two more before you get started with the building, okay? <clears throat> Go ahead. Okay. And now, but how are we going to keep it in there? Maybe we could uh, use 
use this, yeah, we could glue this cotton ball on top of it and glue it on so it would stay in place. Okay, so I'm going to label these pom -poms. So we can do like Yeah, but we'll make two Tape this one. Okay. Yeah, well, I don't think we need to. Good. How's it going over here? We look a little stuck. What are we stuck on? I need to do this. I got this one. I got this one. Perfect. Now we could use, like kind of cut it. So we don't need. Yeah, just make it shorter. Now, how are you gonna use them as wheels? Okay, I see. To glue the cups together. Okay, and then how are you connecting the cups? Uh, with the chariot. Okay. And show me what piece from the bag that is. You're going to use a popsicle stick to connect the wheels. Okay. Think back to your simple machines in third grade. You told me this is the wheel and that you needed to connect them together. Do you remember what the piece is called that connects them together? Axle. Yes, that's exactly right. So what is going to be your axle? Um, this? Your pipe cleaner. Yeah. So now how can you get them to actually connect? This is pretty good. As far as I can so you told me that you built a sled. Why did you choose to build a sled? Easier to travel through the snow in a sled. Why would a sled be easier to travel through the snow versus a tire? Okay, it may go slow, but it kind of spin out sometimes. Right? So, how is a sled, like the bottom surface of a sled, how is it different than a tire? Oh, it's smooth. Kind of like a ski. Have you all ever been skiing? You've never been skiing? So, it's like a sled, and there's thick, there are thin pieces that your feet go on to help people travel through the snow. Who's excited to finish and test with the snow over here? All right, so we know, what are the characteristics of a blizzard? Ben. A lot of snow and? Really hard snow. What else is there? It does freeze stuff. A lot of wind, okay? So were you guys thinking about these things while you were building your snow tires? All right, so how do you think that this relates back to what we've already know about blizzards and how to prepare for them? What do you think, Ben? Yeah, you could maybe think about some things that you might need in order to get around if there was a blizzard in our area. And Ben mentioned you might need to get some special tires, right? Do you think like a bicycle tire would get through a blizzard? No. 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 So you're going to want to make sure your tires are what? Stable. Hard. Stable. Probably built out of something hard. Like Reliable. Reliable. You're going to want air in them, right? A strong material. Right? So I want you, when you're going to go back and finish up, I want you to think about, okay, what do my tires already have that would help them get through a blizzard? And what could I do to make them stronger? Right, thank you for joining our STEM lesson where we designed and built sleds to help us get through a blizzard. Go!